next meeting will be February 27th. Maybe. Maybe. No. I said our next meeting will be February 27th. Maybe. Well, like I said, can you meet the uh, teams? That's or Zoom or whatever. On the calendar. We know how much the our budget is, right? Mm -hmm. So that's you know that's going to be our maximum, right? Well, and the budget goes to certification, monthly certification. No, not that. So you start about lower. Right. Right. I think it starts at. So what's the base? So <laughs> the administrative committee. I mean, have you met with any of the? No, I was going to talk to them last week, thinking, and I have talked to the people first. What my plan was, but I was going to do that tonight, hoping that we can wrap that up within seven days. I mean, you don't need board approval to do that. I mean, you just can't offer me anything. You can't offer me anything. I'd have to come. With Shipping phone in. Who's FaceTime in? Yeah, I think that's a place I've been to. Oh, I've been there. They're expensive margaritas. All right. Ten bucks a fish bowl. For a fish bowl? They used to have a fish bowl at the golf course. see her. Yeah. Because that's the Thanks for coming. All right. Um, we're going to go ahead and. Please not too loud. I went to the hallway. <laughs> That's okay. We'll try to get this expedited as best we can, get you back to your game. Okay. All right. Okay, so. Can, can you see everybody there, Carrie? I, yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay, so. 12 after 6, I'm going to call a meeting to order. First order of business, we need to get a, a slate of election for officers. So we need nominees for president, vice president, and secretary. Yes, secretary. So just vice president and vice president. Okay. Yep. So we nominate for president. <laughs> that was easy. <laughs> BP. <laughs> Can we vote who's not here? <laughs> we got that first and second. Okay. Are there any other nominations? No, uh, he wins. 
Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, you I haven't heard that. that. They, they've nominated. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> <laughs> so we do need to take that. <coughs> So all in favor of Kevin Shins being president, <laughs> say aye. Aye. Are you in favor of Kevin being president? Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Okay. 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 Yes. Or we have to vote Jordan for that. Can we vote Jordan for that? I think we've got to clean that up before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't know if he's going to stay, stay in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, he's just talking about the candidate town board. Come on, guys. One of you can do it. I don't care. <laughs> so, I nominate. Yeah, I've never been on here before, so I don't feel like I need to. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> too late. What? I said. I you said too late. <laughs> so I think John is uh, going to be willing to take the nomination. I said I don't care. Don't care. Okay. Okay. <laughs> goals. <laughs> so I <laughs> like to make official nomination. Yeah. Well, I think you oh, did, didn't you, Kevin? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Is there a second on that then? Second. All right. All right. All in favor of John Downey as vice president, say aye. 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 Okay. Turn that phone off. <laughs> <laughs> so, what other should we cover to what well, we have her? Okay. Go last week's. Um, let's just do the approval of the meeting dates. That's in your packet. It's just our standard, the fourth. Uh, Tuesday of every month, except for December, we don't need December. Is everybody okay with that? All right. I need. We need a motion then to uh, accept the calendar for 2024. I make a motion to accept the minutes from last year, 2023. Second. Second. Okay. So then. Uh, Motion on the floor to accept last year's meeting dates for the new area planning commission in 2024. All those in favor say aye. 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 Are you in favor of the meeting dates that we've set for 2024? Okay, thank you. I'll be here. Um, so, please hold a minute. So, next. In the packet is last month's area plans minutes for November. Do we see any altercations or adjustments? So their votes would be enough. <laughs> so that's all we need first for. Okay. Um, I do need assistance though. We don't have a floodplain administrator right now because that was uh, when we lost our director, we lost our floodplain administrator. So uh, in task, we've had uh, the surveyor. And Johnny has come in, he's familiar enough with it that he's helped out with that, but now Johnny's gone too. So I'm asking that you appoint me just as temporary the floodplain administrator. Um, I don't anticipate that we'll have much going on between now and when we get a, a, a new director on board, but um, I know enough about it, I think I can probably work my way through it, and what I don't know, I can either use um, Cameron or uh, our prior before that, he's Doug, he's with the 
DNR. So you can probably handle that. But um, one of the things we have to do is we have to we have a new ordinance that DNR wants us to get approved. So I've got to send it back to them with um, the changes they want us to make. Um, and then they'll send it back to us and then at the next meeting that we can vote on that. But meanwhile, if anyone comes into the office and wants any kind of an application sign uh, approved or anything like that, I can uh, take care of that. So. Pardon? You've got one. Yeah, I know we had one. So we need to vote on that. Yes. Gloria, I'll go ahead and make that motion to, to approve you or to appoint you as the temporary floodplain manager. Okay. That's not going to happen. Okay. So the motion on the board is to temporarily have Cindy Harmon as a floodplain administrator. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. So I think everything else is just additional information. Then we won't take any votes. Carrie? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the rest of the meeting, I think, is just general information, uh, updating some stuff. There won't be anything to be voted on. You're welcome to stay online and listen if you want, or if you want to okay. sign off for now. I will I will probably, um, I'll stay out here for the next couple of minutes and then at half time I should be able to listen. Okay. <clears throat> I can figure out how to shut my volume off and you can't hear everything. Oh, it's not been a problem. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. Yeah. So the next thing on the agenda is the salary range to replace the executive director of the area plan. Cindy, you give us the range of that and why. Oh, what what is the the new uh, budget? I don't have it with me. The max was fifty three something with that with flood plan administrator certification. Okay. Parts okay. Fifty three was with sir. And I but think the low end was forty. Uh, forty four. I think forty four something. I think forty four was the low range. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe that either one of the applicants you're looking at right now have any floodplain experience at all. So they'll both. So the one that um, if you decide to hire one of them, will have to start the process of going like Cameron did, basically to get the training to be to be certified. So. Okay. Doesn't need to kind of know it takes about a year, year and a half to complete it. Because it's not readily available just any time. No, they do a certain, certain, certain sequence. <coughs> and it's not every month. And it's really, they might go three or four months before they'll have another class. So that's something we probably need to explain to the applicants. So exactly. It's not going to yeah. be, um, yeah, they're going to have to work. Right. <laughs> that might thin the herd there, too. I hope not too much. <laughs> yeah, it's not a real big. I know. <laughs> okay. So is there any additional information or concern to the board? Uh, I'm going to go out on the limb a little bit. We have some people to in line for a point, being appointed on the committee, but there's a due process. they got to submit their interests, so forth. Uh, we do have, and I'll go over with the admin committee, we have some applicants already, so I'm hoping within seven days or so we can get some meetings done with them and try to get the superintendent replaced. Because we have a public here tonight and we're not on the same table, so I'm going to have Cindy, the meeting is not over, but we're going to allow a few minutes. But I'm going to have Cindy talk about the ordinances, where they're at with the commissioners and with us to try to explain the history because, I mean, I've been getting phone calls and, you know, I just feel like everybody needs to be on the same page. So we'll go over that first. 
Cindy, go ahead. Yeah. Done. Okay. So, um, last year, early last year, we took on uh, the job of try of looking at the uh, wind and alternative energy ordinances that we had in place at the time. The wind ordinance was actually put in place in 2019, I believe. Um, the state of Indiana had come up with new proposed language for both wind and uh, solar. So we used that as kind of a, a guide to begin with. Uh, the wind changes that we made had to do with some with setbacks. A lot of it had to do with the requirements of a uh, company that would be wanting to put a project in to make sure that if something went wrong, they went belly up or whatever, there would be enough money put back by them through bonding uh, to cover any costs if, if the county had to take on the project of uh, disassembling or removing any of that equipment. Um, we also, uh, also <coughs> put together solar. Uh, the language that was used by the state, uh, we made a lot of setback changes to. Um, we thought the setbacks were way too close. And we looked at other counties too? Pardon? We, we utilized we looked, other Oh counties. yeah, we looked, we looked at four or five different counties and what they had done and took, took language from, from some of those also. So yeah, we didn't just boilerplate the state's language. Um, so we made those proposals to the commissioners along with a proposal that any wind or solar commercial project would have to go through the uh, Board of Zoning Appeals, which gives the public the opportunity to have uh, a say on how they believe it is going to affect them, um, the county, their area, their own land, uh, whatever it be. Um, so the commissioners then had a public meeting um, back uh, like the second week of December, I think it was. The 19th yeah. comes to mind, 19th, yeah. Um, it was well attended. Uh, a lot of people had voiced their concerns and their opinions. Uh, and then the next commissioner's meeting, they took it all under advisement and voted. And what they did was um, for the wind uh energy language, they adopted our language that we had proposed, including the requirement for uh, everything to go through the BZA. Then they turned around and they put a 120-day moratorium on any project. And then the third thing they did was they have asked uh, the Air Plan Commission to come back and now and do new language that would permit only non-commercial wind en wind energy apparatus and structures under 200 feet in height, and uh, bring that back to them then for approval. Uh, they totally uh, rejected the solar ordinance and uh, want language on solar that would only um, let's see what they said on that. They only want to allow um, solar for uh, in non-commercial general general use by. Uh, Residents. So that's where we are. So they don't want a wind turbine over 200 feet in height, correct? Correct. Nor do they want any commercial. So I mean, that would do away with all commercial. <clears throat> and they haven't voted for sure that they even want personal yet. They just want us to put no. ordinances in. Right. And they have kiboshed totally on the solar panel. Right. Now we are, we do have language already that allows the non-commercial 
So we'll have to look at that and make sure it says structures under 200 feet. What's the um, restrictions by an airport? Because I know that that comes into play with height. Mm -hmm. Like I know a dump could only go so, like waste management dump right. could only go so high. I mean, we'd have to follow what the FAA says. Right. Not. Yeah, that's that's federal law anyway. Right. We'd have so to be anything watched. under that we can't really do. Can right. We? Okay. Right. So ultimately, we propose an idea. Right. At the end of the day, the commissioners are the one that decides it. Right. We don't have the authority to pass ordinances. We only propose them to them, and they're the ones that say okay or no, and go forward. So, what that will lead to, I don't know. So, if everybody's okay with that, I want to open up for discussion. You, you said that the commissioner ratified it was, they don't want anything taller than 200 feet. As okay, far as so the what, they, what they did is they ratified the amendment that they proposed on wind, uh -huh. but then they came back and said, then they put the moratorium so nothing could be done for 120 days. And in that time, they want us to come back then with language that only allows non-commercial wind generating apparatus. Pardon? No commercial. No, no, commercial. no, no commercial. commercial. And no commercial as far as solar. <coughs> no commercial solar either, yeah. So essentially that is that is essentially what um, Tiffany New County did. And Tiffany New County, I believe, um, set their restrictions to 140 feet on um, turbines. Personal or commercial? Any. So basically that takes out the commercial. It does take out the commercial, yeah. So that won't happen. So if you bought 20 acres, you want to go off grid, you could put one in your backyard, but you can't. It won't. Commercial applications won't apply in Tiffany County by doing that. Hmm. Can the state override? <clears throat> the state no. can't. The courts could. What will happen? Again, not speaking from experience, but what will happen is we have our rules. Mm -hmm. So let's use let's use Tiffany County as an example. And they get 10 people because they're, it's going to take that because they're they're not going to come to a farmer that just has 80 acres. They're right. they're going to want a block, and if they can't get all of that block, then it's out. If they do get the block, then they're going to take it to court because obviously the people that own the land are being told or feel like they're being told what they're going to do or what they can't do. So then they're going to fight it in court is what's going to happen. I don't have the answers for that. I've got a question. With the ordinances that we have in place now, they could start popping this stuff up real quick versus what we're wanting to do to No, restrict. they put the moratorium. No. They the put the moratorium, moratorium for 120 days. And that went into effect when? When they signed it. So back in December, December. basically. So the clock started then. Stuff. January 15th. Yeah. Okay, so we've got 120 days from January 15th with the assumption they're going to make a decision before that. But no project can be started until at least then. Right. Cindy, right. so correct me if I'm wrong, but the area plan has to propose the ordinance. Right. So, so the area plan needs to get their act together and come up with very good ordinances then you can take that to commissioners and the commissioners can then you know review it and approve it disapprove it or send it back and we had it and they just shot it down on the solar correct yeah yeah we had this done back in september okay so we tightened it up real tight we tightened it up real tight yeah but it wasn't enough to keep done. it totally down, right. so and they want they want it totally down. So yeah. Would, would it be a good idea to? I mean, you say you look at other counties. The one I've looked at is Kosciuszko, where they come in and they push it back three quarters of a mile from the road, the residents, the power lines, everything. Waterways. Waterways, Waterways yeah. and, and impose that in Carroll County, so it's kind of a backup plan in case. It comes to court because then you can use Kosciuszko as a precedent 
because it's been in place for over two years. And rather than saying we're, we're not going to allow any wind turbines at a certain height, mm -hmm. to me it, it makes just as much sense to have some really strict uh, ordinances so, so mm -hmm. that you can back that up. It's kind of like telling a child, no, you can't have that, rather than here are some reasons why. Mm -hmm. And so your ordinances would be worded so that it would be so restricted that the wind companies would probably go somewhere yeah. else as you well as so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Because Kevin's right, you have the nail on the head. Ultimately, ultimately, if you, if you um, get to a point where it's 80 acres of you know somebody's got, they're not coming here to build 20 turbines. It's just starting. And, and if we don't get the ordinance set so you you need this guy. No, I don't. It's going to be the Chicago city skyline with beacons of blinking everywhere. One of the advantages of the three quarter mile setback is 640 acres is a square mile. Right. A mile on each side. Doesn't leave much room. So <laughs> at three quarters of a mile, you can't put. You can't put a wind turbine on 640 acres. You're going to have to have at least probably 350, yeah, 400 to acres to set one turbine. And nobody's going to come in and do a commercial project where you only have a turbine every three or four miles apart. They want to have, you know, 300 turbines in probably a, 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 a 10 by 10 mile square area. You know, and if they can't get that kind of density, it doesn't justify putting in a substation to, you know, right. and an inverter system to invert to and AC and then step the voltage. They don't get a group. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're going to shut right. themselves right. down. And and that can be potentially more restrictive than what uh, you know, just saying we're not going to accept anything because if you if you take the we're not going to accept anything, then that could probably get challenged in the court. Am I yeah. correct, Cindy? Mm -hmm. You know, whereas if you have three-quarter mile setback and get set back and you say, well, Kosciuszko County's doing it, Tippecanoe County's doing it, so-and-so County's doing it, and this is this is consistent with what they are, then it would be probably a little more difficult to fight in the courts. Montgomery County is another county that is very is. Montgomery, mm -hmm. that is very similar uh, to Kosciuszko. Yeah, part of Costco, Oscar, with some other pluses they have, that they have a noise level restriction. I think Carol's 50 decibels. There's That's 32. The is, yeah. uh, the, as far as decommissioning, if something bad happens, they have it written in their agreement that the, the developer comes in or removes all the concrete rebar. And that, that's kind of a big deal. They don't allow any shadow flicker at all. Uh, they also has called property value guarantee where they have two appraisers who come in and say they're someone want to, wants to build next to my house. They'll appraise my house and say for it's a hundred thousand dollars or whatever it happens to be. And in five years, if I want to sell that house and the value goes down to fifty, these developers pay the difference or they purchase my property. And that's that's a big deal. This so that's just account. some of the stuff that's in the Kosciuszko that I just gave you. Do they take into account inflation? No, but that's, that's a good something. That's they do. yeah. Mm -hmm. Appraisals are available for houses. They do comparables. You've had them, Kevin. You, you know, they're going to they're going to come up with surrounding properties mm -hmm. and, and uh, comparable values and, and adjust them for inflation. Mm -hmm. and, and if you compare Carroll County setbacks. You know, property lines are 660 to 780 feet compared to three quarters of a mile. I mean, you can't, I mean, it's 20% of Kosciuszko. And you can go down the list and, and just plug these things in. And since Kosciuszko is a proven, you know, I keep using the word precedent, that's really what I think, that's where I think Carroll should go. And the other thing I would do, I would add uh, water, setbacks from water, and I would include, you know, lakes, streams, creeks, uh, drainage ditches, and run it at three Wet quarters lands. of a mile. Wetland. Get out of cover. Cindy, doesn't the uh, wildcat have a... Quarter. 
about that quarter or two there, but that, and that would be, you know, additional setbacks from that. Too. What do you know? What the setback is on that? I couldn't find it. And the bad thing is, yeah, at the, even at the state level, you know, they, they, they speak of dwellings, you know, so they, they don't necessarily speak of property lines. So if you own a 20 acre lot, and currently it would hinder, say, for you, for example, Kevin, you wanted to build a a, a pole barn on your residence for a shop for yourself and you wanted to put on your back 20 acres then the measurement from the turbine was from your dwelling but later on it could actually hinder you because they could look at you currently and say you don't meet the required setbacks right. from the turbine and you couldn't even build on your own property so that's uh, that's, that's where I was going with the, the residence property lines right it's not it's not strict. The property right. this property line or the future the property property ordinance. Ordinance. and that's the current yeah. ordinance for us by the dwelling yeah, yeah. By the yeah. we extended it more than what the state did but yeah is there a way to put is there a way to, put it to where uh, someone could build a house closer to that in the future rather than you see what i'm saying you they have to have such a distance to put up a tower right but is there a way that somebody, a, person, a property owner, could then build a house closer than that setback? Well, you see, what I'm seeing is what we're talking about is that's kind of a reverse uh, penalty on the property owner um, yeah. as far as future development or anything of their property. Or even, or even if it's just deemed agriculture right now. And some farmer says, hey, we've grown, we've bought more acreage, and we need, we need a, a, a shop of our own on our own land. You know, it's not a dwelling, but they need a place to store tractors and combine. And they, they're going to be hindered later on on their own 80 acres that's adjacent to the, the turbine owner, you know, at that point in time. So, well, but a dwelling is a home. That's not it. Yeah, but I still home. argue the fact that you shouldn't have a turbine beside your building on your own ground whether you live there or not it, it shouldn't it shouldn't affect you in any way shape or form you know the decibel rating 50 decibels at the state level well i shouldn't have to listen to any more than 50 decibels if i'm at my shop and i'm a, a 2500 acre farmer you know so these setbacks like jay's mentioned those are set in stone at the in kosciuszko county i don't know why we can't just approach it and basically change Kosciuszko to Carroll and, and be done because it's a proven proven fact that nobody's argued it there. So and far. It's only been out a year. Two years. <laughs> well, so two yeah, years. but. Well, two years. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. 